This is the Tokyo Bada 23 sneaker channel. Tokyo Bada 23 no sneaker channel. There's my niti absolutely no de my niti mita kudasai. I bring you content every single day. I bring you content about sneaker reviews. I bring you content about sneaker releases. And I bring you content about sneaker news. If you're into sneakers, if you want daily content about sneakers, this is the channel for you. I'm bringing you a sneaker today which I thought was going to be a dud. Last year, Adidas took a massive hit on the D Rock line. It didn't go well. They put a lot of money into to their PR and it was a bit of an absolute loser to be honest uh, but they've redone it they've re-released it it's coming out again only one year later and they've cleaned this thing up and brought us the D-Rupt S and I think it's a banging looking sneaker As I said in the introduction, today is all about the Adidas Derupt S, which is the new version of the Derupt coming out real, real soon. And tomorrow I'm going to be bringing you a Nike sneaker. Now, I said that I didn't like the Derupts from last year, but what they've done with the Derupt S was great. And the Nike sneaker that's coming out tomorrow, well, it's not coming out tomorrow, I'm reviewing it tomorrow, is the Nike uh, Air Max 97 Dallas. Uh, and the connection between that Derupt thing there and this 97 is that I'm not a huge fan of 97s. In fact, I'm not a huge fan of 95, 97s and 98s. So it's a big deal for me to review a 97 because I'm actually on board with this one. I usually don't get to 97s. I, I've said it before in my videos and I was actually called out on it by one of my viewers who said, come on, you know, butter, 97s look great. And I was like, nah, it's just not my thing. But this 97 that's coming tomorrow, there, her, this 97 that's coming tomorrow, the Nike Air Max 97 Dallas, uh, is actually a cracking looking sneaker and I'll be happy to bring that to you guys tomorrow. So make sure that you hit subscribe. Make sure that you are connected to this channel for that daily content. Don't miss out on tomorrow's review. Now looking at this sneaker, we have to look at last year's 2018 Derupt because the comparison is between the 2018 Derupt and the 2019 Derupt S and you have to understand what the Derupt from last year looked like to see what the changes are for this year but looking at last year's Derupt one of my problems with it was it just looked like there were only two parts to the sneaker the upper and the midsole and those two parts were extremely uniform even though they had that kind of netting across both they looked like I don't know how you could explain it it was like almost like photoshopped or something you know on uh, computers where you have that um, icon you can click to pour paint in and it fills a section of, uh, of the page with, you know, a certain kind of paint. It's almost like that on the 2018 upper and the midsole. It's just, I, I don't know, it's like it's designed on a computer and block, blocking, I think we'll call it, where the upper and the midsole have got blocking design and they just look like two sort of blocks. Uh, they look very inflexible and very clunky, which is unusual because they're a very sleek sneaker. But that's the big change changed between last year's 2018 Derupt and this year's 2019 Derupt S is that even though the basic concept of having that netting on the upper and that netting on the midsole is still there, they somehow have incorporated into the design of the sneaker a look of flexibility which wasn't there on last year's model. Uh, and there are some other changes too, but altogether those changes come and I think have really elevated the Derupt from being an absolute last place loser of a sneaker into something I think people are going to get on. I really do. I really think the Derupt S might actually be a surprise runner in this year's sneakers and, and this upcoming spring season sneaker sales. So keep an eye on the Derupt S and see how that gets on over the coming months. Okay, just realized that as you can see that my hood lace was like way off and it's kind of a bit embarrassing. I thought about reshooting the video, but nah, I'll just leave it in there uh, and you can see me make a fool of myself. Hey, it's all good. Uh, so let's get into the sneaker. What we're going to do is we're going to go from top to bottom and look at every element of it, which I think makes it a softer sneaker than it was last year. I talked about it being those two halves, the upper and the midsole, two very geometric, two very solid halves uh, that didn't have much flexibility in them to look at, not, not necessarily to wear. Uh, and how they've softened those things up this year and how Adidas have done a good job of softening that. So we're going to go top to bottom and have a look at all those things. So the first place to look at is that top line where you put your foot into the actual sneaker. Now in previous years, or the previous year, because these have only been around for one year, the 2018 version, that top line was kind of, I don't know, flat and very two-dimensional. And what they've done is uh, they've, they've raised the front part a little bit so you can see that the tongue element and the heel tabs are not at the same height, which is really helpful and sort of breaking up that uniformness of the sneaker. And they've also sort of angled them back a little bit, which I think is another design element
Salmon that has been pulled in from the human races from Pharrell Williams. So that sort of um, top line and the, the top of the tongue and the heels that have got a kind of angle towards the back of the sneaker, angle towards the heel, I think it softens that geometricness of it and that solidity. So there you've got one part now, instead of just having the upper and the mid, so you've got that uh, top line is one place where there's a distinction and uniqueness, if you like. Also, if you come down a little bit from the top line and both sides, you come down a little bit on the front and the back. We'll start at the back. You've got this leather tab there, a pull tab on the heel, which I think is really nice because the upper being white and white, uh, having these light colored leather tabs on there really helps and really sets off the design of the sneaker. I like that element of the aesthetic. I don't know what it would look like if it was in contrast to the upper, for example, if say you had an all white upper with a bright purple patch on the back, for example. I don't know if that would work, but because it's a light leather patch on a light upper, I think they go together really, really well. And then coming back to the front where they've also got that leather, it's not on the top of the tongue though, it's across the top of the tongue. It's not really a tongue. And it's a really new uh, design element, which isn't drawn from Farrell Williams. It's all on its own. It's a derupt element element is this leather patch right in the middle of what would be the tongue which is stitched on at the top and the bottom but open on the sides and the laces pass behind that leather patch and I think it's a really cool design addition to these derupt S's and, and then Going on further from that, these lace system has been updated very, very much, and that's a massive update. And again, I have to say, I think it's come from Farrell Williams. Um, you can see that the, uh, I was just checking this door behind me was closed because I was like, oh, are you guys looking in my closet? Um, you can see that the uh, uh, the lacing system is like those uh, Farrell Williams uh, uh, human race NMDs with that, that cage on the side and the NMDs, Friends and families, you know that purple one or mauve one or maroon one uh, from Far Williams is an absolute grail of mine with its uh, friends and family written in Japanese on each one on each shoe, a friend's shoe and a family shoe. I definitely want to get my hands on them. But you can see design elements from that line in the cages on the side of these D-Rups, uh, which sort of, again, breaks up that upper. So you've got the top line, the upper, and then the cages where you just had a sort of uniform upper before. Now that's a three-part upper in a way. And they've done a really good job of breaking up the different elements and taking that solidity out of the sneaker and softening it a bit and those cages on the side are a big element of that also uh, as you go down uh, towards the bottom of the sneaker you've got those cages and the netting that continues uh, and they, they cover the um, what they call it categorical data which is a popular thing or a, a, a synonymous with the DRUP line is having that data on the medial side only it's a bit like uh, an off-white sneaker with uh, Nike and Nike Air where they have that box of information and text but whereas on the, the Nike sneakers that that's very obvious and, and sort of prominent because of the netting and the uh, cages on these derupt S's, it's very hard to see that, that data. But that's, I think, is a design point. It's deliberate, as they say. Um, so there, we've come down a bit to the, uh, the bottom of the sneaker. Uh, looking at that upper with the mesh over the, the upper itself, I think the white upper with the white mesh on top looks really, really good. And I think that was one of the issues with the previous derupts from 2018, is that the upper mesh was in contrast to the upper material. So you had like a, um, I don't know what we had with purple mesh on a yellow upper or something like that. I'm just pulling those colors out of nowhere, but uh, they really were sort of um, too bright and too stark. So I think having this white mesh on the white upper really works well and, and it's a, it complements well. It's enough detailing in the mesh for it to pop out, but not too much color for it to be too uh, intrusive. So I think it's a really nice upper to this sneaker. And then, like I said, that midsole is that netted midsole, the same as the upper. And I really do think they've done a great job of softening the sneaker. It's now like a five-part sneaker instead of a two-part sneaker. You've got the top line, you've got the lacing system, you've got the upper, you've got the cages on the side, and then you've got the midsole. And I think all together there's enough there for it to be something that people will get on and will be interested in. Uh, going to the very bottom of the sneaker, the last thing to look at is that outsole, but there's nothing special about it. It's just like most other Adidas releases in the last, I don't know, six years with uh, the outsole with windows through to the midsole. It's not a boost midsole as far as I know, unless uh, something really unique is happening. I can't imagine it's a boost midsole, uh, but you do have that outsole with uh, the windows through to the midsole as standard on these D-Rock. That's my review of the D-Rupt S's that are coming real soon. I think it's a real improvement on the sneaker from last year. Adidas have done a great job. An awful lot of comparisons to the Farrah Williams Human Race NMD line, but I think they're good comparisons. I don't think it's too similar that people are just saying, oh, that's just a cheap knockoff of the Human Races. I think there's enough difference between the sneakers, but I think what elements of design they have pulled in from that line has really helped to soften the sneaker and to turn what was an absolute dud in my department onto an absolute 
absolute firecracker of a sneaker. Well done, Adidas. Well done, D-Rup Line. I think you've done yourselves a really, really good job. All that's left for me to do is to say thanks for checking in today. As usual, I always end my videos like this and tell you, as I did at the top of the video, that tomorrow is that Nike Air Max 97 Dallas, a sneaker I never thought I'd review, but I'm actually maybe, maybe, maybe behind that sneaker. So definitely hit subscribe so that you can check in tomorrow for that review and all the reviews on the days thereafter. But for now, from Tokyo, Japan, it's time for me to sign off and thank you for checking in and say that I will definitely see you tomorrow. Thank you for checking in today, guys. I really appreciate your being here and viewing my content. Over here, we have the channel subscribe button. Chanero toro kuzihi onagaishimasu. Over here, we have the video I recommend you watch next. Kochira wa osusumi desu. And up here, we have a link to the channel introduction video. Kochira wa chanero no profil no video desu. Check them out. Clicking on them really helps the channel.